Alright boys and girls, this is the hardest hitting, most tanky DK build that I've come up with to date. It is just insanely strong, but as you've seen in the thumbnail, it might have a little issue, and we'll discuss that later on in the video. Now keep in mind, this is a PTS build, so this is going to be more of an overview than a full build video, but we will be giving you all the information that you need to know and just leaving out the uh, the less important stuff. All right, boys and girls, let's get into it. All right, so I'm not gonna just come out and say it. Stam DK is very meh at the moment. It's not so much that it's fell behind, it's just other classes are so much stronger at the moment. That Stam DK has got very meh. Something that's not meh is Mag DK. So what we can do, and what we have done in this build, is taken all the good stuff from Mag DK and kept the Stam DK playstyle. How we've achieved this is basically swapping out some skills and some stats. So we're, now we're running Coagulating Blood, Burning Embers, and Flames of Oblivion. Burning Embers is just a really, really solid dot heal now it works by swiping it on many different people and every time it ticks you get a heal so unlike how it used to work where you would swipe wait a few seconds swipe again get a heal it doesn't work like that anymore so you can in a 1v5 swipe this on everyone if you're fighting someone on a guard you can swipe this on guards and get just crazy amount of healing you get this up on five people you just enter god coagulating blood burst heal very important with one of our set combos later when we talk about that to have a very strong burst heal and coagulating is and then flames of oblivion obviously we're losing the healing from the other morph but it is just hitting so damn hard that you know you can't not use it and obviously we're making back healing from burning embers so basically from these two changes we're getting more healing and more damage versus running stam dk setup does that make sense obviously it's still functioning the same so we've still got the same play style but we've got the added advantages of mag dk then the second way we're doing this is basically just evening out our stats a little bit so we are using quite Quite a fair few more mag skills so we want a little bit more max magic and a little bit more mag recovery and through these changes we've been able to keep that traditional stam dk play style but be effective and efficient like you know if you want to play mag dk that's fine a lot of people want to play stam dk because of the play style it does have a very fun play style and we've managed to keep that all right let's talk about some of the stats in this build and see how damn crazy this thing is so we're sitting at 20k just over 20k max mag 20k stam basically 35k uh, max health I like to run a decent health pool on this in my opinion you want to be over 33k just for that vamp passive you know at half health we're still got a decent chunk of uh, health so you know we can hang in that area a little bit when we are under 50% health our damage mitigation is crazy and we'll explain <laughs> a little bit more in a sec um and then our recoveries are 1600 mag and 2k stam obviously a bit more stam recovery because we want to do things like dodge roll cc break and all that good stuff then we're basically sitting at 7300 weapon damage so that in itself is pretty pretty impressive but when you think that we've got another 10% flat damage on top of that Basically, functionally, we've got well over 8,000 weight damage. And then our resistance is 27k on our front bar, and we're about 32k on our back bar. Alright, so the stats don't really tell us the whole story, and let's get into the gear set so you can kind of understand why the stat sheet does look good, but when you see the gear we're running, you'll understand that the stat sheet is actually a whole lot more impressive than what it looks at the face value. Gear on this field has some core uh, components to it and the rest is kind of adjusted to whether you want to be tankier whether you want to do more damage basically to suit you if you want to play in a group you could run a certain different set we're on this setup with that stat sheet we're running magma iron blood back bar plague break sea serpents one piece training now if you wanted more damage you could go clever arc front bar and push well over 8k weapon damage if you're running in a group or just a good choice in general is Rallying Cry. To be honest, Rallying Cry is probably a better option than Plague in a lot of situations because that uh, we're getting a little bit more damage 
and obviously that crit resistance is going to help us drop down our burst damage and just be crazy tanky with 3k crit resist. Uh, so yeah, they're the options. Same with the monster helm. If you wanted to be a little bit more tankier, you could run blood spawn. If you wanted to do a whole lot more damage and didn't want to rely on corrosive, you could run bollogs. As I said, the core of this build is iron blood and sea serps. Now I've been, I, I don't like iron blood. I never have really liked iron blood because of the snare. I like to be kind of snappy and 30% damage mitigation is really good, but to me wasn't worth the 50% snare. But if you said to me you could get 30% damage reduction, 500 weapon and spell damage, and 10% extra damage on top of that for a 50% snare, I'd be all for it. And that's basically what this build has. Is achieving. A lot of people may be thinking, hang on, what? 50% from Iron Blood, 40%? Wouldn't you just basically not move? Well, no. The game basically overrides Iron Blood, overrides Sea Serpents. So, whatever the biggest snare is, that's the one you get. Now, there is kind of exception with some mob snares, but player snares aren't going to add on to that. It's just going to be Iron Blood. Basically, if you're going to run Sea Serpents, run Iron Bloods. There's no real reason not to run this. And as I said at the start of the video, there's crazy damage, crazy tankiness. What's the downside? The downside is the snare. At, at the end of the day, you are going to be snared at 50%. Now, there is some ups to this, though, because you can choose when you want to be snared. Obviously, Iron Blood, you stay on your front bar, you don't proc Iron Blood on your back bar. Pretty simple. Same goes with a Mythic. It only procs at full health. So if you don't stay, get to full health, then you don't proc this. But you will be wanting to choose the locations that you fight. You don't want to be fighting people in the open field, basically. And also, as I said, burst heal is very important because, as I just said, the mythic only procs at full health. You want to be able to get to full health very easy, and DK can do that through their hot and obviously coagulating blood. Well, I hope that's gave you guys a good idea of what a DK is going to be like next patch. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by my streams. I stream every second day. I'll have the link in my description. Also, feel free to join my Discord and uh, ask any questions you may have in there. And as I said, we'll have the full build out pretty early on into the uh, release of the update. Anyway, boys and girls, as always, I love yous and I'll catch yous in the next one. Peace.